The Twin Cities are full of monumental structures. Skyscrapers suggest commerce and industry, stately homes project wealth and influence, and churches and cathedrals reach up toward the heavens. Other structures are a bit less lofty. In the shadow of the Cathedral of St. Paul sits the east portal of the Selby Avenue Tunnel. Abandoned and sealed, the tunnel is a curious monument to a once common mode of transportation, the streetcar. I'm Matt Anderson a curator with the Minnesota Historical Society, and today I'm talking about streetcars in Minneapolis and St. Paul. The Twin Cities' first streetcar line opened in St. Paul in 1872. Minneapolis built its own line three years later. Horses pulled these first cars, and while wheels on rails made the horses efficient pullers, Twin City operators were left to feed, care for, and shelter nearly 2,000 animals. Looking for a better solution, St. Paul installed a cable railway system in 1887. A cable was laid in the street and pulled in a continuous loop from a central powerhouse. Streetcars operated by gripping or releasing the cable through a slot between the rails. It was a little like a tow rope on a ski hill. The mechanism was just as complicated as it sounds and was expensive to install and difficult to maintain. Frank Sprague, a Naval Academy grad who served aboard the USS Minnesota, found the best solution, electricity. Sprague strung electrical wires fed from a central power plant over his tracks. Streetcars contacted the wires through long poles with wheels that trolled along the wires and fed electricity to the car's motor. Electricity was a success, and Minneapolis and St. Paul electrified all of their lines by 1892. Well, almost all of them. And that brings us back to this tunnel. The climb up to the top of Selby Hill was too steep, and St. Paul kept a segment of the old cable line in place to tow cars up the grade. In 1906, the cable was finally replaced with a tunnel. Instead of climbing up the hill, streetcars could climb through it. The project cost nearly $500,000, about $1.4 million in today's dollars, but it cut the grade in half and eliminated the need for cable power once and for all. The streetcar thrived until automobiles became practical and affordable. The Twin City system recorded its highest passenger count in 1920, when it carried more than 238 million people. Ridership totals fell each year thereafter, leveled off during the Great Depression, and then climbed once again as World War II brought gas and tire rationing. The gains were short-lived, though, and riders returned to their cars at war's end. Buses moved in, and the last Twin Cities trolley left Minneapolis in 1954. The Selby Avenue Tunnel isn't the only surviving artifact. Several pieces are preserved in the Minnesota Historical Society's collections. This sign, once mounted inside a streetcar between the windows and the clerestory ceiling, was one of many ads that fought for passengers' attention. This uniform cap from 1936 is typical of the headgear worn by conductors and motormen. And yes, with one exception, the streetcars were crewed by men. That one exception came during World War II. With men either off fighting or working in stateside defense jobs, women were hired to operate the trolleys. Viola Erickson wore this jacket and used this money changer during her time as a streetcar motorette. She was one of some 500 women who kept the trolleys running at a vital time when ridership surged. This wood sign, dating to about 1920, stood at the corner of Lexington and St. Clair Avenues in St. Paul. And while it may not be as colorful or storied as some of the other pieces, it's just as important. After all, most trolley trips either began or ended under a sign like this. From those first humble horse car lines in the 1870s, the Twin City Streetcar Network grew to 523 miles. Lines stretched from Stillwater to Excelsior and blanketed every neighborhood in Minneapolis and St. Paul. It's been more than 50 years since the last of the old trolleys roamed city streets, but in a way they live on. In museum collections, in curious relics like this, and in the memories of all who rode them.